Welcome to Winner's Kids Preteens Edition. I'm your host, Auntie Adeze, and I'm so glad to be with you all once again. And it's the last Sunday of the month, so you already know we're about to give God praise and honor for what he has done from the beginning of this month to now. So, as always, let's go before God and pray prayer. So everyone bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. Lord, I give you all the praise and all the honor, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here once again in your presence, Lord. But Father God, we pray, Lord, as everything that we have talked about from beginning of this month to now, God, I pray, Lord, that it will be installed into our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, Lord, you open up our minds, our hearts, our ears, and our eyes to just receive what you, what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, like I said, it's the last Sunday of the month. So it's a month that we give God praise for what he has done for your birthday, for our testimonies, for school, for whatever it is. Let's give God praise with our praise and worship.
I feel One to go. So what a way to just how this month has been, knowing that God's love is excess, knowing that no matter the situations you may be dealing with or facing, know that God's love is more than that. It will cover all situations and all problems you may be dealing with. And before I get started, um, there was a question that was posed to us recently by one of our peers, and it was said, how do you know if you have bad thoughts? How do you know if a thought is from God or so? So I want to address it before we continue. And I want to read 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 through 6. And it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So I want to focus on verse 5. It says casting down imagination. Casting down anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. First of all, we already know the Holy Spirit and God is pure. He's good. Everything about God is amazing and great. God will not, allow, will not tell you to commit something or do something terrible. Like, for instance, he will not say, oh, commit suicide. He will not say, oh, no one likes you or you're unloved or you're worthless. That's not God. That, that's not God because we already know God is good and God is pure. That's the whole, that's the devil. The devil installs fear. But you already know what the Bible says, that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. 
So he's giving you power. So any negative thought that may come your way, you have the power to cast it out. You have the power to say any negative thought that is not of you, Holy Spirit, I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. He's giving you love to know that everything that you do has to be done in love. And a sound mind, which is peace. So with any thought that comes to you, if it's about fear, you already know it's not of God. If it brings you disturbance of your peace, if it brings you hatred, if it brings you anything that will not, that doesn't make God who he is, then you know it's not of God. And you have to understand and know, it goes back to reading God's word. You have to know what God says about you. I cannot sit here, I cannot stand here and say these things about God if you yourself don't know about God. And you guys are 10, 11, and 12 year olds. So there's nothing wrong with you picking up the word of God, reading what God says, even if you don't understand King James, because I remember growing up, I didn't understand King James at all. So my mom brought me a Bible that I could understand. It's still the same thing. Read his word. Read what God says concerning you. And when you're reading his word, you know that you have the power to defeat any negative thing that does not hold any power, any place into your life. Okay? So any bad thought that you have, I just plead the blood of Jesus and I pray that nothing of good things is being spoke about into your heart, into your mind, and that you walk in victory And because we are winners. So as a winner, you're not defeated. You're not a loser. You're not worthless. You're victorious in every step of your life. All right, so I thank God for that. So let's dig into our lessons for today. So for today, just a recap of what we've talked about. As this month is godliness is profitable unto all things. And we talked about what is godliness, why we have godliness, and how to walk and have a godly life. And our memory verse comes from 2 Timothy 2, verses 19. And it says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord know those who are his. Let, and let everyone whose name, the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. That's from 2 Timothy 2.19. So that was our memory verse for the month. So today we're going to recap. We're going to start from our Bible character, Daniel, where we talked about in week one, which was what is godliness. So let's sit back, watch Daniel, and then come back and recap some of his points. of Daniel. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Daniel was taken to Babylon. He asked for vegetables. God made him strong. God gave Daniel understanding. Daniel's friends obeyed God instead of the king. They got punished. God rescued them. Daniel understood more dreams. He was the king's favorite. Others got jealous. Daniel obeyed God instead of the king. He got punished. God rescued him. Daniel served God no matter what. And that's a part of God's story. So we're just going to touch a couple points about week one, which was what is godliness. We talked about godliness is godlikeness. So for you to have godliness, you have to have the attributes and the characteristics of Christ. We also talk about being set apart, being able to stand out and being the light of on the hill, being the light of your generation. So you cannot do the things where other people may, um, may do one thing. You have to be set apart and be different. And we also talked about about being fit for God's use. You have to be fit for God's use. God can use anybody. But when you have godliness and you understand and know that, when you have godliness, you're able to be used by God. Just how Daniel was being used by God. He was being able to interpret dreams. He was able to escape the lion's den. He was able to do so many great and mighty things in God's name because he was fit to be used by God. We also talked about holiness and being the nature of Christ and consecration, which is putting on the new nature of God. So those were the things that we talked about in week one when it talked about what is godliness. So week two, we talked about why godliness, and we're going to watch um, our Bible characters, Paul and Silas, and then we'll get back to recapping our point. Here's the quick verse. Paul and Silas were two friends. They wanted to serve God. They told people God's story. Some people didn't want to hear it. Those people threw Paul and Silas in jail. Paul and Silas weren't scared. They had a dance party to worship God. 
God opened the jail doors with an earthquake. Paul and Silas stayed to tell the jail guard about God. They went free and kept on serving God. And that's a part of God's story. And lastly is who we are. When we have godliness, it's who we are and it's what we are identified as. So having godliness and why we have godliness is amazing because God is able to use you. God is able to promote you. He's able to favor you. So that was week two when it came to why is godliness. And week three, we talked about how to live a godly life. And we highlighted Timothy. So we're going to sit back, watch Timothy again, and come back and recap his points. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Tim liked learning about God. He followed his teacher Paul all around the world and kept learning. He also showed a bunch of people what it looks like to follow God. Because Tim followed God, he wasn't as scared about things or worrying about stuff that didn't matter. And that's a part of God's story. Okay, so, so Timothy was a young boy. He was very young. So instead of him playing with his friends and doing things that his friends want him to do, he decided to be under the leadership of Paul, who wrote pretty much all of the New Testament or so. And he was able to listen to Paul and his teachings about Christ. And then sooner or later, he started to be able to um, go out and tell people about Christ. And, you know, people were like, wow, you're such a young boy. Like, why are you telling us about God? You should be doing other things. He was saying, no, I want to know God. I want to help you guys know Christ and understand that God is so good to me. I want to be able to express that to everyone else. So how to live a godly life. That was week three. You can find more about Timothy in first and second Timothy and where Paul pretty much talks to Timothy and all of those things. Um, understand and know how to live a godly life. You have to believe God's word. You have to understand and read his word, listen to messages and anointed books. Um, plead the blood of Jesus against all ungodly attitude. Know that when you have godliness and you want to live a godly life, every, anything that's negative, anything that's not of God cannot be part of your life. You have to live a life that's pleasing unto Christ. Able to guard your heart with all diligence. Um, guarding your heart, not only your heart, but I also want to say your eyes, your eye gates, your mind, and your ears. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever that you plant into your mind, whatever that you put into your heart, guard those things. You know, we live in a society where social media is very rampant. Many people are on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all of these social media platforms and stuff. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in what other people are doing because they want to be famous and all of those things. And we may think, oh, if they're doing it, I could do it too. But understand and know that. Think about how your life will be in the long run. How your life will be 10 years from now. Like I said, I know people that I grew up with. And, you know, I would think that they're so amazing, so great. They were cool and popular. 10 years from now, from this to day on or so, they, many of them are in jail. Many of them are on the streets. Many of them are in homeless shelters. And some are even dead. So that just shows you that you cannot live your life by based on how someone else is living. So call because you may see how they look on the outside, but you'll know what they may be dealing with on the inside. So living a godly life is not just publicly, but privately as well. And understand and knowing that whatever that you put into your heart is what you'll speak. So whatever you put into your heart, your mouth will speak those things. So if it's negativity, if it's ungodly things, you'll sooner or later start having those things around you. And surround yourself with the right company of people. Like I mentioned, you are in control of who you allow into your life. So if you allow people in your life that are negative, they're not good, they're doing negative things, things that do not please God, sooner or later, you're going to adopt those things. And don't say, oh, well, I'm strong enough to handle it. No, you're not. You're, you're, you, you, can't, you can't handle all of those things. You have to beware of all of the people that are in your life. You want people in your life that will push you to Christ, not pull you away from God. But sooner or later, your friends kind of dictate where your life will go. And, and also, get out of that notion of having many friends. 
I believe you just have one or two good, good friends that will speak life into you, that will encourage you, that will pray for you, that will edify you, or the friends that you want to keep forever and ever and all. So also, um, those are, um, well, that's all of the ones that we have for week three. So that pretty much talks about how to live a godly life and godliness. And I also, before we close, um, there's a video I want to show you all about, you know, salvation. And I know that many of us have in our minds that, oh, I will serve God when I'm older. Uh, talking about God now is not cool and all. But seeing how the world is today with a pandemic that came and kind of shut everything down, it kind of makes you start to realize and understand then what are you waiting for? What is stopping you from serving God? What is stopping you from giving your life to Christ? So I want you all to watch this short poem, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to go ahead and close out. I'm standing here in the midst of tears, allowing shame and defeat to drown me in fear. My sin is suffocating me. Look, God, I'm too dirty. I'm filthy as swine. I can never come close to perfection. How could you ever call me mine? And I know you're not asking for perfection, but Satan tries to play tricks on my mind, and I can't help but to think of my sin from time to time. It's like my sin is on instant replay. But you tell me to pause and to remember what you did on that third day. Jesus, you rose from the grave and told death to excuse me, blotted out my sin and welcomed me in so you could use me, use us. See, church, there's no time to waste. His arms have been extended. This is the single reason Jesus Christ ascended so that even from his heavenly throne above, he can have a personal relationship with you and me. So don't ask, what do I need to do? All the work's been done. All you need to do is run to the risen one, Jesus Christ, the perfect son, the one who was and is and yet to come to the altar. The price of our mistakes have been paid in full, and Jesus is here now and ready to make you new. See, the old shall pass away, and your sins shall remain. the opportunity and the invitation to come to Christ. Um, if you feel that, you know, if you're not ready, I totally understand. But if you feel ready to give your life to Christ, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I believe you died for me on the cross so that I might be saved. Right now, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I open my heart to you. I come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of all of my sins and giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. So just by saying that prayer, you're now one of God's own. You know, there's a party in heaven when one soul comes back to Christ and rejoices and give God praise. So just understand that heaven and the angels are having a big party just for you for just repeating that prayer. And I just want to say it's been an honor and a privilege to be with you all as always. Before we go ahead and close out with prayer, I want us to say the memory verse from 2 Timothy 2.16. 
2.19, and it says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God have stands, having this seal. The Lord know those who are his, and let everyone who's named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So it's just been an amazing time talking about godliness. I pray that everyone has godliness in them and walks in godliness for the rest of this month and rest of this year. So let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. I give you all of the praise. I give you the honor, God. I thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be in your presence once again. I pray, Lord, for everything that we've talked about, every worship song, every Bible character, every point, Father God. I pray, Lord, that it be embedded into our hearts and to our minds, God. That we're able to walk in godliness, God. I pray, Lord, that we will make you proud in everything that we do. I pray, Lord, for our families, that you will continue to protect us, cover us, and guide us, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we'll excel in our studies, in our families, in our community, and everywhere around us, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. As always, I love you all. God bless you all, and see you all next Sunday.